Hi everyone, I'm Anjali and I'm the founder of Spring Up Leadership. We work in the area of social emotional learning for children. If you're wondering what social emotional learning is, they're basically life skills which are rooted in emotions. So we help children understand what an emotion is, what does it look like, what does it sound like, how does it impact your behavior and what are the various coping skills that you can use. We also help uh, children understand various relationships, how to build nurturing and engaging relationships and not just that but also the ability to interact with people whose perspectives are different from theirs. Uh, we also take them to a space of being able to pause think through the various choices that they have and then be able to make a choice and also own the consequences of the choices that they've made. So in a gist, that is what uh, social emotional learning is. So it involves a whole lot of other skills as well. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at an issue that a lot of us parents struggle with. That is our children love to interrupt and they love to interrupt when we're doing something important, when we are on a call. So we're going to look at that with a little story and a little activity. So, uh, but before we go into why children interrupt, because as adults, maybe we look at it and wonder, I've told my child so many times, but why is my child unable to understand uh, that he or she shouldn't be interrupting me when I'm doing something or someone is speaking? As an adult, let's take a step back and look at it from the perspective of maybe a four-year-old or a five-year-old. Well, for a four-year-old or five-year-old who's so new to the world, there are like so many things which are so exciting. The mind is buzzing with ideas. They're so curious. They're having so many interactions with the world around them, both positive as well as negative interactions. And when you have this interesting interaction that they want to tell you thoughts which they formulated into words, and they want to share it with you, at that point, we expect them to have self-management skills, that is, exercise their self-control, to not speak now, but hold it on for later. Along with that, we also want them to have the social awareness skills, which is, uh, there is someone else who's talking, so let's respect the person who's talking, let's listen to that person, and then let us uh, take our turn to talk. Well, if you look at it from a perspective of a four or five year old, that's a whole lot of things that have to come together. But having said that, it doesn't mean that it can't be learned. It just means that our children need a lot of reminders and a lot of positive reinforcement to be able to apply the skill. Let's dive right in and let's look at what we can do because we have for you a very fun story that you can listen to along with your child. Children out there, I hope you're listening. So the story we're going to do today is called My Mouth is a Volcano. It is written by Julia Cook. And Julia Cook is one of my favorite authors because she's written such beautiful books on social emotional learning. This particular book is, some, is a book that we read extensively in our learning spaces and a lot of our children really enjoy this book. So I hope you all will enjoy this book as well. So let's dive right in and get started with the story. So this is a story of a little boy called Louis and Louis had a problem. Like, you know, all of us have problems. And the problem that Louis had was whenever someone was speaking, he suddenly had all these thoughts in his head which began to jumble and tumble and grumble and they slid right down his tongue. They did a little wiggle and wiggle and jiggle and they pushed against his teeth and they just jumped out like a volcano. They just erupted. And it bothered everyone around him because they just didn't like this habit of Louis of erupting all the time. But our friend Louis felt that it was not his problem. It was his mouth's problem because his mouth was a volcano. So one day our friend Louis went to school and as he went to school he saw two of his closest friends were very very happy and having a very animated conversation. So what did Louis do? He went ahead and joined them and he heard that his friends had invented a new game and they wanted to share it with him. And just when they started talking, he suddenly had all these thoughts in his head which began to rumble and tumble and grumble and they just slid down his tongue and it wiggled and twiggled and jiggled and pushed against his teeth and in his mouth erupted like a volcano. And he said, oh, you know, remember, I also invented a new game and it was so much fun and everybody had so much fun and blah, 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 blah. And do you think his friends were happy? Of course not. His friends were really upset and they said, Louis, you interrupt all the time. But our friend Louis said, it's not my problem. It's my mouth's problem because my mouth is a volcano. 
But his friends were not happy with that. So off went Louis to class. And you know, like all your classrooms, Louis' class also had certain rules and instructions which he had to follow. So the teacher said that whenever you want to speak, what you need to do is you need to raise your hand, wait for your turn and only then talk. And Louis tried his best to do this, but he was not often successful. So today when he sat in class, he heard his teacher talking about something and just as his teacher was talking about it, he suddenly had all these thoughts in his head which began to rumble and tumble and jumble and they came right up to his tongue and they began to wiggle and wiggle and jiggle and his mouth erupted like a volcano. And he said, ma'am, you know, I also remember reading this in our, one of my encyclopedias. I read it and it was so much fun and blah, 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 blah. And do you think his teacher was happy? Of course not. His teacher was really upset and she said, Louis, we have certain rules in class and you're supposed to raise your hand and wait for your turn unless it is an emergency. And what did our friend Louis say? Our friend Louis, of course, said, but ma'am, it's not my fault. It is my mouth. My mouth is a volcano. And of course, teacher was not happy with him. That same evening, Louis went to one of his favorite classes, which was storytelling. He loved stories like all of us do. And he sat down on his rug, all snug and all set to listen to the story. And the storyteller started the story. As he was listening to the story, he heard the word mountain and then he heard the word garden. The minute he heard the word garden, there were all these thoughts which began to rumble and tumble and jumble in his head and they came right up to his tongue. They began to wiggle and twiggle and jiggle and they pushed against his teeth and before he realized, his mouth had erupted like a volcano. And he said, ma'am, you know, I remember the time when you mentioned the word garden, I remember gardening with my grandfather. I did this, I planted seeds, I watered, and then we grew these vegetables, blah, 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 blah. Do you think the storyteller was happy? Of course not. And were his friends happy? Of course not. And of course, Louis always had an excuse saying that it's not my fault, it's my mouth's fault because my mouth is a volcano. Now, his friends and his teacher were really tired of hearing Louis' excuses. So they had just almost given up on him. But Louis didn't mind because he felt his thoughts were important. He felt the problem was in his mouth. So off went Louis home. And when he went home and reached home, Mama that day had made some yummy yummy cupcakes. So Louis was super happy. So he started eating his cupcakes. And just as he was eating his cupcakes, he heard his parents talking and as his parents were talking, he heard the word Bill. And the minute he heard the word Bill, he suddenly had all these thoughts in his head which began to rumble and tumble and jumble and they slid right to his tongue and they did a little wiggle and wiggle and jiggle and they pushed on his teeth and whoosh, his mouth erupted like a volcano again. And this time he said, Mama, you know I have a friend called Bill and today he blew a bubble which was so big, 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 big and it was really big and it just burst and it was so much fun. And then he stopped and looked at Mama's face. Mama definitely didn't look happy. She looked very stern and she said, Louis, you have erupted again. You have interrupted us. Shouldn't you wait for your turn to talk? But what did our friend Louis say? Louis of course had an excuse. He said, Mama, it's not my fault. It's my mouth's fault. My mouth is always a volcano. But Mama didn't agree with him. Mama said, I think Louis, when you interrupt, it's very, very rude. You're not listening to another person who's talking. But Louis of course was upset. So he stomped off to his room and he sat down on his bed. And when he sat down on his bed, he looked around and what did he see? He saw a calendar. And marked on his calendar was a very important day, which was tomorrow. Because tomorrow was his day of show and tell. And Louis was super excited because he got his important space and his words were going to be important and he could talk about all his favorite things. So what did Louis do? He got ready with his favorite things. He stuck his picture. He had everything ready. The next morning he got up bright and early. He gave his hair an extra comb, his shoes an extra shine and off he went to school. And when it was time for him to do show and tell, he took his pictures, felt very, very important, 
went right to the front of the class and as he stood there and began to talk his first topic and his first picture was going fishing with his father so he began to talk about fishing and as he began to talk about fishing from the corner of his eye he saw his friend mike hand going up and before he knew mike had begun to talk about his fishing expedition deep down under the sea he began to talk and talk and talk and louis realized perhaps what mike was saying was more interesting than what he was saying because everyone had stopped listening to louis and everyone had begun listening to mike and louis was so aghast he was so upset he couldn't believe it how could mike be so rude it was his important place it was his important words and mike had just erupted and taken away his place it's okay i have another topic that i can talk about and then i shouldn't have a problem so the next topic he spoke about he was very excited so he took out an x-ray and he held it up to the class and he wanted to talk about a time that he had broken his hand and just as he started talking from the corner of his eye he saw his friend carol's hand going up and before he knew carol had started talking about the time she broke her leg and she had to be airlifted and she had a, such an interesting story to say and as carol kept talking louis realized nobody was listening to him because perhaps carol had a more interesting story and louis couldn't believe it carol again had taken away her his important space they both had just spoiled his show and tell and he was aghast and upset he thought both of them were so rude and as he kept waiting there he just stepped in and teacher of course told both mike and carol that it was not okay to interrupt and they had to wait for their chance but louis show and tell was gone was spoiled so louis of course had a really bad day at school that day and he went home very very sad and he reached home and you know when mamas and papas see you sad they know and they ask you right so louis mama of course asked him she said louis why are you looking so sad and louis told her mama i had a really bad day in school because my friends mike and carol were very very rude they stole my important space they stole my important words and they began to speak when my show and tell was going on and now mama stopped and mama looked at him and asked him do you think mike and carol have mouths which are called canmoles and louis was surprised he stopped and he thought about it and then he said maybe but i thought it was very very rude and they just spoiled my time and mama asked him what do you think happens when you erupt all the time and you interrupt people all the time louis ah uh, thought about it and he said oh god mama i just realized how rude that is it surely feels really very very bad but mama what can i do my mouth has become such a big volcano now mama thought about it and mama said can i give you a little trick if you want to help yourself and louis said of course i'd like to try mama so mama said whenever you hear something and you have all these thoughts in your head which begin to rumble and tumble and jumble and giggle and jiggle and come out of your mouth what you can do is you can breathe she said you can start breathing and keep breathing in and out in and out till all those words in your head settle down and they simmer right in your head till they wait for their turn to start talking now would you like to try to do that let's just try it once i'm sure all of you have these interesting thoughts buzzing in your head right which just wants to jump out and erupt like a volcano So what we're going to do now is let's try breathing. So what we're going to do is breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Mama taught Louis to keep breathing in and breathing out. And now Louis, of course, had a question. But Mama, is this going to be easy? Mama looked at him and said, "I'm sure it's going to be tough." but it depends on whether you want to try and louis thought about it and louis said i think it seems quite simple mama maybe i should give it a try so from that day onwards we said i'm really going to work hard not to interrupt anyone else because it is really rude 
and it's also hurtful to steal away somebody's important words and somebody's important space, right? So the next day, Louis went to school. He heard his friends talking and he had all these words which rumbled and tumbled and jumbled and they came to his tongue and they wiggled and jiggled and just as they were out, supposed to jump out of his mouth, what did Louis do? Breathe. 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 He kept breathing till the words in his head simmered and they glided and they waited and they waited and they waited till it was his turn to speak. So even in class, he raised his hand and waited. In storytelling session, he though he had all these thoughts in his head, he waited. And when he came home that day, he told his mama, Mama, today was really great. It was quite exciting. There were so many times that all these thoughts jumped into my head. They wriggled and they wiggled and came to my mouth. They pushed against my teeth and my teeth almost opened, but I stopped it by breathing in and out and in and out and in and out till they settled down and I waited for my turn. Mama said that was fantastic, that he really tried hard. And that evening, he had a sister who loved to say long stories. So what did Louis do? His sister started telling a really long story and of course Louis had all these thoughts that began to rumble and tumble and jumble and tiggle and wiggle in his head and in his mouth. But he waited. He took a deep breath and kept waiting and waiting for her to pause for him to start talking. And Mama and Papa were super happy that Louis had learned this trick and his mouth had stopped erupting like a volcano. So Louis' mouth was no longer like a volcano. It didn't erupt. And Louis understands that he can control his mouth and stop erupting like a volcano unless it's an emergency and you need an adult's immediate attention. So that's the story of Louis and how his mouth which was a volcano. I hope you all enjoyed this story and I hope you all will also work hard like Louis so that your mouths don't erupt like volcanoes. What we're going to do next is a little craft activity. So what we are going to do in the craft activity is we are going to create a little reminder, a visual reminder which you can probably stick at home uh, on your wall. This is a little worksheet that we use in our classrooms but you can make this at home as well. So let's get down to doing it. So what you would need is some glue, a scissors, some crepe paper and maybe some orange chart paper if you have some brown chart paper to make a mountain and some sketches and color pencils. If you don't have uh, color papers then you can of course draw as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a little mountain from you know out of which you can make a volcano. So we're going to apply some glue now. If you don't have chart paper you can of course take a sheet of paper and just Draw your mountain and also make a volcano the way you would like to make it. So what we are going to do is fix it here and I like using this crepe paper so you can have your volcano splashing as much as you want. There you go. So alternatively instead of this what you can also do is you could also use these like volcano that is spewing out spewing out and here you can write the various things that breathe I've written breathe you can write whatever you think are the skills that's needed not to interrupt so we say be respectful Wait for your turn. You can of course stick all of this and you have a little anchor poster ready right on top that mine.
So I hope you had fun listening to the story of Louis and how his mouth, which was a volcano, stopped being a volcano and stopped erupting. I hope you had fun doing the craft activity as well. Do make sure that you stick it somewhere in your room or wherever you can see it so that it's a visual reminder for you not to erupt like a volcano. So if you'd like to know more about social emotional learning or more stories and activities related to social emotional learning, do check out our website www.springup.in or visit us and follow us on our Facebook page and our Instagram pages. Also make sure that you check out Kinder Pass and also connect with Kinder Pass in case you want to know more about child development activities. Do write to us or do write to Kinder Pass and we'll be more than happy to interact and connect with you. Thank you so much and bye.